so yeah, we'll call our emergency select board meeting here to order, March 16th, 2020. A uh, few items to discuss uh, on the agenda here. The first item we were going to discuss was consider declaring a state of emergency uh, in response to the COVID-19. Um, personally, I feel like it's it's time to declare a state of emergency. Um, you know, Chicopee's declared a state of emergency. The state's declared a state of emergency. The president just called to have limits to 10 people in a meeting. All the schools are gone. High schools are closed. Elementary schools are closed. It seems like a good time to declare the state of emergency and get some emergency funding for particularly the Board of Health to help us uh, right now. Hey, guys. So, I'm not in agreement with that. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. my opinion. I'm kicking it off here. Okay, kick it off. Yeah, but go ahead. So, okay. oh, or who wants to go first? Sounds like so, these. we had a lot of discussion about this during the 11 o'clock committee mm -hmm. this morning. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we tried to reach clarity on was what does a state of emergency declaration do for the town of Hadley? And so far as I can tell, the correct way if I'm wrong, it, um, it uh, allows us to access resources in other departments in order to fund something associated with the, uh, the town's response to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, this is an important tool in our toolbox, um, but I'm thinking now is not the time for us to exercise that tool. And the question I asked on Friday and again on, on today was, what signs do we need to see in order for us to uh, know that a state of emergency is going to be, if we declare it for ourselves, it's going to be the most effective? And I'm not seeing those signs at this moment. Can I just say one thing? The difference between the uh, state of emergency at our level and a federal or state declaration is that a federal or state declaration basically opens the the tap as far as money flowing in from all kinds of places, FEMA, whoever else, uh, at the local level that doesn't really get us anything that we don't already have. We have the money already, we just, it, it would allow us to transfer it, but at this point, I mean, I'll let the chiefs speak to it, but I, I don't know that we're at that point where we need that money yet. Well, and can I, just in terms of the transfer, I mean, we've done this before when, you know, under circumstances not even close to this. Uh, you know, if we had to pull the finance committee in in a hurry and do a reserve fund transfer, we could we could make that happen fairly quickly in anticipation of then declaring some sort of an emergency too. So it's it's not like it's the only avenue we have available to us to move money. But we're also able to uh, work within our budget so if, uh, for instance, as the scenario was given to me, that if uh, we were using extra people in the fire or the police and they were now having to dip into their overtime accounts and that seems to be getting a little bit depleted, they still have the opportunity to draw from other parts of their budget um, and also would give us the opportunity if we came down to it at some point in time, which is not now, that we would be able to go to the reserves if we needed to. But I don't think at this time, uh, we are not in a state of emergent. We, uh, I was very disturbed about a comment that was made that X number of people were going to pass in the town of Hadley because of this, and there is no documentation. There is nothing out there that says that amount of people are going to die in Hadley. So whoever is putting that out there, that is not what they should be doing. That is not right. You're going to set a panic mode. Please, we don't even have one case in Hadley right now. And there's a limited amount at Cooley that have even been tested for it. So please, let's just do what we need to do and uh, keep ourselves safe, keep the distance, follow the guidelines that the governor has put out there. Wash your hands and don't cough at anybody and cover your mouth. Um, stay out of public places, uh, those type of things that are all out there for our guidelines. That's what we should be doing and not setting a panic mode for our, our town. Mike, yes. Yeah, so I, I spoke with you the other day yeah. and by no means, I, I have gone through this numerous times and I, I don't want you to feel like you 
can't declare a state of an emergency. I just wanted to make sure that when folks, uh, that they understand what that state of emergency means because it basically, what it does is it frees up your your entire budget, all every all the funding that you have in the community is available to be utilized without reserve fund transfers or anything like that. That was the only thing. I it is absolutely fine. I've I spoke with Mass Emergency Management today. If you feel that you want to put this into place and have it in place, again, it does one thing. We everybody knows that there's an emergency happening. That's the second <laughs> reason why you would declare a state of emergency. So for example, when we had the lightning strike at the public safety complex mm -hmm. and our dispatch center was completely offline, we declared a state of an emergency because we had uh, $190,000 worth of equipment that we needed to somehow get money for, I believe, or 80000 And we also wanted to make sure that everybody understood that this is you know, an important thing. So by no means, Mr. Chair, your, my job is to represent to you what the emergency is if you feel that you want to declare the state of emergency because um, you're, you're concerned that you might not be able to do it in a timely fashion at some point, I don't foresee that happening. But if you feel more comfortable doing it with the board, there's no ramifications to this. So you can put it into place and it doesn't, it's not going to do anything other than allow us that if we had to transfer money, you know, department to department. I think the other time was when there was a possibility of a dike breaking. We've done it numerous times. We've had it for a snow, snow tober. We had it for the dike. Yeah. Um, so yeah. ultimately, I don't want you to feel like you can't. This isn't a document that's going to get us into any kind of a pickle. It's strictly a resource for us to use. And I have it here without the draft on it. Um, and it's just adding, adding the signature and the time. Yeah. And it goes through all the governors, so that you've seen the draft. It goes through all the governor's recommendations, and then it tasks me with giving you information as to why you want to implement this document. And I think, I think to just David's point, though, and, and thank you for reminding us of the fact that we have indeed done this before. Mm -hmm. um, everything that you described and, and Joyce, you reminded us of, there are they're very clear, immediate, measurable impacts, right? We already knew that we had the issue with the equipment. We knew that, you know, we had to call in the DPW and external resources with the dike. I mean, so we were marshalling troops and we knew money was going out the door immediately. And I think that's the difference right now. Um, so I think, I think the point that was made, I think Governor Baker's doing a phenomenal job. I really do. Um, I, and I think that that messaging is getting out loud and clear. It's consistent across the state. I'm trying to weigh that with causing more fearfulness. And I, and I am concerned that if we locally declare a state of emergency and we don't really have a compelling, specific, imminent reason to do it, that people are going to start speculating that there's something going on that they don't know about. I mean, and I would give you an example of that. Um, and I think Annie McKenzie and, and the school team are doing a phenomenal job. Um, they obviously have the superintendent's group. They, they're you know, dealing with DESE at the state level and trying to figure out what to do, kind of across the board, not just individually. And as soon as there was some sense that the schools were going to shut down for a couple of weeks, people started texting me saying, is it true that there's a confirmed case of Hopkins Academy? Because they just... That, that's where they went, and, they and it. right. So I mean, I it could come to that. I hope it doesn't come to that. If it does come to that, it's going to be because be because we need to be expending some money immediately because we have issues. I just I'm not seeing it right now, and I and I think people are looking for calm leadership. Uh, so just putting in place. I mean, um, how well it was that the senior center closed down except for taking phone calls and things like that. They mm -hmm. jumped the issue last week. Your elders are at the most vulnerable um, at, at that, anybody over 60, so them not having a gathering group over there and still being able to provide services to our elders uh, throughout the town, um, but not letting them gather just to make sure that that doesn't spread or have any coughs or colds or anything like that. So um, those are good things, and I think we talked about shutting town hall down when I talked to you on Sunday. 
and I've already done that, put that in place with the library, I think making it accessible that people can call in. Um, are you doing a drop box or anything for taxes? Oh, Excise we're, tax we're, we're getting one installed. Okay, so we a just, We box just picked up the outside, outside today. by the back door? That's what Sue had requested, so I think yeah. she was working with yeah, you know, she worked with me. Uh, or mail it in. I, mean, I think just getting the message out to the residents is our uh, main goal at this point, just to inform them so they're not scratching their heads wondering what are we doing. So, mm -hmm. just uh, being um, informed is probably the best thing that we can do to our citizens. Just going back to the state of emergency, I think my main driver is getting money for the Board of Health to be able to do with what they need to do right now to support the town. What do they need to they do? They need supplies, um, some, some labor, and I don't know everything they need, but um, just funding to put, put things together in the department. I wish I knew more or had somebody I here that like, could speak better. Like could, do you guys know more about what the, the Board of Health needs well, exactly? Part of our reason? meeting today, I, yeah. had, I asked the question and Emma is putting it together, yeah. um, is what exactly it is, that, what the needs are. Um, I understand that there's potential for having the, you know, the nurse, Board of Health, if they have to set up, um, you know, if we next need to start doing outreach to folks that are homebound, mm -hmm. that don't have, that live by themselves, you know, or seniors or whatever, that may not be able to go out shopping or may not be able to get meals there. And so we, I've, I've asked for what that needs list is yeah. so that we can see if we actually have it in house first and then make the request other than that. Um, yeah, um, she sent me this list of things. I can pass it over to you. It's like, uh, a, you know, list of items, but I think part of it too is just having the some funding for somebody to be able to do that work. You the know, is we can't even get that stuff though if we wanted to at this point. You could say we need ten thousand boxes of rubber gloves, and you couldn't get them if if you wanted them. Masks are at a premium. Uh, are at a premium. Uh, yeah, we we actually I like I said. Yeah, yeah, our, no, you were having you know, trouble too. So I mean, I I'm getting calls from you know where they're looking at regional caches, and it's. Uh, we discussed that they're, you know, they've released the strategic national stockpile, but it's going to take significant time for it to trickle down to us. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, we're dedicating the resources to first responders that may have to respond to those. However, I do understand that if she has a need for our health nurse to get to a home, we need to support her on that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, we'll make the request from MEMA. Uh, it goes into a queue. And that queue could be weeks. I, you know, we are we, we've, we've even adapted our in-house cleaning. So we we've added cleaning, um, but we're also utilizing rather than the Lysol wipes, we're using bleach and water ratios. And we're you know we're we're doing daily cleanouts with the crews coming in and going out. Um, so just to make sure that we're keeping up with that. Um, but the the supplies they're they're not they're not there right now. So she's looking at five hundred. Masks. She's looking at. I mean, I'm. I'm not sure what she's going to be cleaning. Why the board of health will be going and cleaning anywhere? So, I Chief, then correct me if I'm wrong, but when you make a request to MEMA or a, a re regional organization, if you ask for 500 boxes of gloves you may get whatever they think is reasonable, correct? You're not going to just necessarily get 500 boxes because you asked for it. You're going to make it 10 because they say, well, you've got a town of 5,000 people and you've got a board of health of three people, right? It's, it's not just what you request. Is that how it works? Or is it, for the most part, whatever you ask for, you get? No, it's, I mean, there's, like I said, I've already contacted them and there's nothing there to give, right. even. So we're, we're not even at a point, you know, we're obviously we're monitoring, we're going on our website or on websites to see what's available, but, and, you know, we're doing it internally, all the departments are, but. We didn't even have there's, Sandy Wipes at our office today. So it, it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing there right now, but I understand her list and perhaps we can put short term together because we're not going out yet because there's been no reported cases, but a to-go kit for her is something that we could probably manage with what we have if the need is uh, you know, to get into a house. We also discussed the fact that maybe it needs to be a first responder going in, so a medical so evaluation can be done mm -hmm. uh, to see if that person actually needs a wellness to be visit. transported. So a wellness visit, which could be the town nurse, or perhaps it would be um, an EMT or a paramedic, but 
I think that's all stuff that we can continue to work on with our And to that point, group. I mean, I, and I, I don't want to get into a staffing discussion with you right now, but I mean, today compared to even five years ago, you have more resources to share in a situation like this than we've had in the past. Um, I mean, obviously, first and foremost, you know, the ambulance is going to be going to 911 calls, but you would have other staff members and, and that could supplement what the Board of Health is doing, right? We're not the ones that should be staffed with the gowns and the gloves and the masks. That, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But that's, there's, yeah. it, they're not there. They're so not. what I'm telling you right now yeah. is that we have even our own ambulance. Uh, I just had a conference call with Action. Mm -hmm. So we have basic minimums that we are, you know, we don't have a lot and we're strategically keeping them in place for the what if. So. Um, again, I think it's you know our coordinated unified command meetings that we are we're having either daily or every other day just need to continue, and then we can you know keep evaluating the situation, and then if we have to ramp up, obviously we're we, we're continuously looking for resources and asking, but if they're not there, what's the plan if we have a case developed? So we're dealing with it at the response level right now, where we don't want to impact our workforce. So force protection for us is we no longer have, uh, you know, police aren't going out to every single flu-like symptoms call. They'll, they'll stage uh, along with our firefighters. And if the need is for us to go in to assist with our ambulance, that's what we'll do. But the plan is to minimize that exposure as much as we can, and that includes minimizing equipment that's being used. Yeah. So that's, that's where we're, we're at right now. 54 nurses are in quarantine at Berkshire Medical. So if we need, so what do we do in the event we need more funding for extra people, whether it's the Board of Health, Fire Department, yeah, different things that, that don't have that money in their budget right now, So what's our strategy for doing that if we don't have the state of emergency? Well, I think then we would declare a state of emergency, and then we would have a very specific reason to declare it, right? As opposed to kind of getting ready for a Can you possibility. Yeah, and that would be my argument for declaring it is so we're all ready to go if we run into a situation and aren't able to declare. We can declare. I mean, I guess the question is, is when, what do we want to do to declare a state of emergency? Do we want to meet as a select board to make that declaration? I would, or is I would it prefer that we have an emergency management person here mm -hmm. that is going to tell the select board if there is a need and a cause right now for us to do that. You know, instead of jumping into the gum, that's his job. Okay. We have to defer to him. He will let us know. He's in contact with NEMA, and they will tell us what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And we can always do an emergency meeting if we have to. And for those watching at home, it's the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Thank you. Agency. And we're, we are under unified command. I just want to make sure everybody understands mm -hmm. that, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. That our, our process right now is unified command. So schools, public health, board of health, emergency management, public safety, um, and town administration. So again, we're unified command, so we're getting the big picture and putting together one unified message to everybody. Mm -hmm. And again, I just want to reemphasize that I am not telling you that you can't implement this, but at this point, I don't feel, I, I mean, if, the, if something comes up tonight, tomorrow morning may be different, it might be a phone call to, use to say, hey, listen, we have some additional guidance that's come in. We feel that we need to implement this, um, and, and we can we can do it. Uh, again, I'm I'm supposed to give you my my recommendation, and I just wanted to make sure that while you can do it, I just want to make sure you understood what it what it does. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as the uh, we do have funding in the fire department budget for medical supplies that hasn't been it hasn't been um, exhausted at this point. Uh, but again, we. We don't have to buy it right now yeah. <laughs> because it's not well, there. And so. That's another point. I mean, the, the reality is that certainly we're concerned about certain departments, Board of Health, Emergency Management Services in general is where we would likely see the need for funding. But there are other departments who, because of what's going on, aren't able to do their programming. And so there are budget dollars that are going to be sitting there unspent for a while because of this as well. And we can always backfill them later on if we have to. But it actually well, saves us money by already have implementing closing of buildings and things like that so that you're not having to go in, you're not having to have wipes and 
sanitizers and things like that in there because nobody's going in and using these buildings. So that's on, on that side of it, we're saving money in that area. So there's money available from different budgets. We just need to know how to jump it around. The, the other thing is, is I think people should remember is David brought it up earlier is that we're all trying to track what we're spending on this. So if there's any outside expenses, we're, we're trying to keep track of these things. And we haven't seen any kind of large upticks in spending. So, you know, we're buying cleaning products if we can get our hands on them, things like that. But, you know, the bottom line is, is that we have, we have money built in to our budgets, especially public safety, for issues like this. So we can self-sustain for a period of time. So you're not going to have to take from other budgets to, to cover us. And as far as you know, the, the Board of Health requests go, perfectly legitimate and reasonable requests to have a cache of those supplies. If they were out there and available and their budget could not sustain buying those things, then I could understand going down this road. But until they become available, I, I don't think declaring an emergency because other towns said it is, is the right thing to do. Um, my concern is what Molly brought up, which is there's a very fine line between being prepared and taking precautions and stepping over that line and causing a panic. Um, that's my biggest concern. I'm not an emergency management director. I don't have, you know, have to worry about the ICS part of this, but I see steps heading in the wrong direction going down that road. I, I have a contact too that if we do need um, cleaning supplies and stuff of that nature, you just have to let me know. That uh, list there, what is that, a couple thousand dollars worth of uh, yeah. gloves and masks? Uh, one <laughs> so, so we're not talking tens of thousands of dollars worth of No, and equipment. both of both of our uh, budgets could easily accommodate that right now, and then if we had to go down the road to, to cover the expenses, you could do it at some other point, if it was even available to buy. Yeah, and I think the other concern was just from the health department, and we can talk to them about that tomorrow, is what their labor needs were exactly and what they were thinking of for that and then just how we would fund that. You know, but it sounds like we can do that within the budget, so. Okay. Uh, the other thing that kind of got mentioned in that, I guess, is just town hall. And right now, the town hall is closed to the public, but do we want to close town hall to staff and have staff work remotely instead of coming in here um, if they're able to do their duties from home? I don't know what that looks like for town hall staff, but to me that, again, makes sense to not expose people in town hall if it's if it's not not necessary. Well, we're closing it to the public, so nobody's coming in. But there but is the, the one instance that I I think that some phones for right now need to be answered just in case, maybe a week or so. I think, and especially but we have taxes a way and things like for that. people to we have the cell answer phones. The phones. Yeah, so people could answer the phones from home, correct? So I have to, opinion? it's something that I would have to set up so that okay. it's like when we get the move to the town, uh, mm -hmm. the town hall to the public safety pump. Yeah. Yeah, it's a call forward thing, it yeah. will take a little time to do it, but. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I can see sending park and rec, conservation, um, I don't know who else would be someone that doesn't really have mm -hmm. a critical need for the next couple of weeks to, during this. Yeah, I think it's an individual by individual position yeah. assessment. Yeah. Um, because there's some people like like everything I do at work, I I can do it remotely. Right. Like just what, that's how our software works. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure like in town hall if I'm there, not sure yeah. you know, are some applications that can only be run mm -hmm. physically from here. I think that there there sure. are some client server type applications here. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean I, I'm certainly in favor of mitigating the human contact but it, it just I think maybe that's something that I don't know if it's a department head meeting kind of conversation or, or yeah what. so Jennifer you were working with the Northeast IT to get a, computers connected to the server yes um, we purchased VPNs I did only purchase five because um, based on their recommendations very typically is everybody on at the same time 
and so it's, it's per user, not or per person on the server, not per user. Mm -hmm. um, so we have seven laptops. I've sort of talked to different department heads and with David about who needs what, mm -hmm. and I have I have a, a list, and they're loading them today and tomorrow. It is taking a little bit of time to because they're remoting in Northeast IT is. I don't know if they want that broadcast, but they're no longer coming out to people. Yeah. So everything has to be done remotely. So it is taking a little bit more time than they thought. Um, but I will have them up and going soon. Um, and, then, and then there will be ability to work from home or remotely for a certain amount of people. If you want everybody, I'm going to have to purchase a lot more VPNs and honestly a few more laptops. Um, I just don't have enough of them to go around. I can get department heads that have sort of what was seen as critical functions. Um, and and so that's where we are on that. But we're not there yet. So well, certainly we would never have, and like we have set up for our employees that do not report to work if you have fever, cough, right. chills, mm -hmm. any of that, please stay home, don't come to work. We don't want you at work. And I think anybody who's immunocompromised or has someone at home who's immunocompromised, Correct. we should really think long and hard before having them come in as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are critical functions too. I mean, obviously, you know, when you're dealing with money, you don't necessarily have the luxury of saying, okay, well, I'm just not going to deal with money anymore for a while. I mean, you, you have to keep those types of you functions still have going. bills to pay and payroll to do and things of that nature. So. Right, but like David's saying, you know, park and rec and some other things, they're very important, but they're, they may not rise to that level of a, an essential nature. Well, because their programming is canceled to, to you know, right. things like that. Right. It's canceled right now. But the other thing we need to remember is that obviously we want to take care of our employees and staff in town hall and elsewhere, but at this point, this could go on for months. We don't know. This could be a two-week thing. This could be a six-month thing. We have no clue at this point. So. Mm -hmm. The goal should be obviously safety in mind, but to have operations be as normal as possible going forward because this could have, this could be for a while. We could yeah. be stuck like this, and so if we shut down everything, and the collector's not able to collect the tax revenue, this and that, then we start getting into trouble. How do you pay the bills for equipment? How do you pay officers overtime? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, safety is important, and at the same time, we have to stay as operational as possible while keeping safety in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a practical matter, we couldn't shut down and send everybody home tomorrow. Uh, we just needed more things in place mm -hmm. in order to achieve that. If we are going to work remotely, there are a bunch of personnel policies that I'd like you to adopt tonight so that we have the tools and the guidelines and the parameters by which people can uh, work from home. Um, or if they have to go home because they're sick. And perhaps they're a new hire and they don't have a whole lot of sick leave. There's a policy there for a sick leave bank, which I'd be happy to donate a couple hundred hours just to uh, prime and pump. A couple hundred, wow. A couple hundred, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike had something. Yeah, I just want to say the governor's office, they did another conference call today, and they are, uh, while they're, you know, they were talking about the Senate and the House and you know, laws are still being put together, or folks are still reporting to work. Um, I completely understand. We, we are doing, we, we've highly recommended the social distancing. I think the officers here, or the offices here, um, this is strictly just my personal opinion about, um, I, I don't know if we're at having to not allow folks to come in at this point. We can certainly get that process in place. Um, I understand not wanting to expose people, but if you have one person per office, I think that we're looking at, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I just think we do have business that still needs to be conducted until we can get, until we can get the phones online and, and I can start doing that like tonight if I have to. Um, it's just I need that direction like as soon as possible because it's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit of time. We set it up pretty quickly for the Board of Health so it's not a long process, it's just, you know, getting that, getting that together. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's a matter of contemplating, let's assume it's an inevitability and you just don't know when. So figuring out exactly what would, what would happen if a week from now we said, hey, Mike, we've just got to make this happen and then you're, you're really ready to go. I am, I'm ready to go. It's just do, it's the physical act oh, of doing okay. it. Because right. once so, you okay. do it, you, the phones are forwarded. 
Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how about if each department, um, maybe tomorrow, gets with David and says how much of their operations would be degraded by them going working from home? How much of their job can they not do while they're not here at town hall? And we can look at that as a way of, well, how much of an impact does this have on the town's operation as a whole? Uh, yeah, and I'm not personally advocating for just completely clearing out town hall. I'm just saying we should be working toward getting every, mm -hmm. as many people as possible out, because I don't know what we're doing for cleaning every night to make sure it's being disinfected properly and all these things. I mean, there are a lot of protocols out there. We've already said we're short on cleaning supplies. We're short on first aid, or first aid supplies, I'll call them right now, masks and gloves and all that kind of stuff. And so are we setting ourselves up for any kind of, um, you know, worst case scenario? Because we do have a very small bench in town hall. And so we want to keep everyone healthy. That should be our number one priority. Yeah. So it sounds like maybe we should start moving in the direction of getting people remote, but not say it's time yet. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mandate it. I think. Yeah. I think it's a, um, get the juices flowing. Have people start thinking through what that means. Mm -hmm. What essential functions are that they do versus less essential functions. Mm -hmm. And what they would need to do them from home. Is right. it a laptop? Is it a VPN? Is it some yeah. So I can be the central clearinghouse for that information, so we can start putting that together. The coup plan that was handed out to all the department heads has that request list on it. So once I get all those in, it gets into the coup plan. We have the plan for the relocation we did, mm -hmm. so we can pull that information out. Um, some departments didn't put in that part of what they would need to do at home, yeah. so that'll be a follow-up. It's just, again, it's there's so many things going on, it's so... Like it's it's hard to find the time just oh, to yeah. sit down and get sure. it yeah. so, so that's that's why at this point uh, tomorrow is going to be the focus on wrapping up the coup plan. Okay. The phones are in a drawer at the station. It's literally just turning them on, uh, activating them. They're already they're already paid for, so they're you know what I mean. It's just mm -hmm. setting it up and then communicating with Verizon to have that those numbers call for it. Yeah. And we actually have the numbers, so the phone numbers are already there, and. I've done it with Verizon before, so it's a phone call to them to, to set up the call for it. Okay. Um, but again, it's call for it that now removes it from your phone to a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So now we have discussion and potential vote of the select board to request that the governor file special legislation on behalf of the town requesting expedited approval to postpone the annual town election. So. I don't know, David, if you have anything to add to the next two have kind of have to do with the town election. Yeah, so and the, so the, uh, in order to move the town election, if you think that that's a safe thing to do, um, we need to basically get our legislative delegation and the select board to petition the governor to file legislation on our behalf in order to get that election uh, postponed. Jessica needs to order the ballots as soon as possible. We are kind of right in the middle. A lot of people are, have already, already ordered their ballots and want to delay, and we are just re ready to sign my name to them. I, I played devil's advocate. I can argue either way, keep the election, move the election. So that is totally up to you guys what you feel you want to do. Do you have what any suggestions that? where we should have the elections? More space to space people out if we decided to. Where do you think it. it would be? I mean, if instead of the cafeteria, at the, I mean, obviously you'd have to be at the school. Yeah. I mean, you can't just move voting locations because you feel like it. Mm -hmm. uh, if we decided to have it in the gym, and normally we, gym. we normally we use half a gym, do the full gym. Another thing to consider is that 90 percent of 95 percent of my election workers are all in that kind of vulnerable risk range. Yeah. So, you know, ideally, if in three weeks this whole thing goes and by mid-April everything's fine, but you also have to take into account the timing for absentee ballots um, to process or certain deadlines and things, so... Can, can, can I ask you Yeah. You mentioned that the ballot <coughs> is being ordered or not. Um, 
I mean, the election would change because it's still the same people who are going to be on the ballot. So is there right. like a date stamp or yeah. something? Is that what well, matters? So you can't have, well, like, I say, if, 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 for example, I ordered the ballots last week and we already had them, we'd have to, any extra ballots we'd order would have to have that same date on it. I had actually a call and uh, I sent David all of the emails I got from Cotton and Page, and I don't know if it was just me not understanding it accurately, or because we are in that gray area, what exactly that does that mean? Do we put, you know, the future date on? Do we have to, if we decide to postpone, do we have to decide on an actual date right then and there? Mm -hmm. Right. So right. this is yeah, kind of hot off the off. presses, yeah. and so we're kind of so things out. And a way to continue to hold them as is. Um, could we have enough pens in there that we would give each person their own pen to come in with so they wouldn't have to use the ones that are there? You have 1,500 to 2,000 in pens that you want to bring to the election. Well, or people can bring, I mean, people are more than welcome to bring their own. Right. We have a specific pen that we use because people right. psychologically think that it works the best. You can use a crayon. I've tested those ballots on every marking okay, device. So we could bring, you ever. bring So if you own. want to get those little, you know, Golf pencils and I use a mini golf yeah. to keep score. You can do that. So I guess my question is: so if we decided for now to hold it as scheduled, mm -hmm. and things went downhill, and we were a week out, and we said no, we, we need can't. minimum of twenty days. Okay, so there's no minimum way to cancel. There's no days. way to cancel it whatsoever. If we're twenty days, twenty business days. Yeah, and I, and I guess no, that twenty days. Twenty days. 20 days. <clears throat> How many registered voters do we have? Three thousand something. Thirty-eight hundred. We have thirty-eight hundred, and we normally have. Right. Maybe 1,200 if we're lucky. Right. Our annual town election normally is like 15 to 17, or 12 to 17. 12 to 1,700. Um, but well, we also have three contested races this time. Normally right, we so don't you, have would, you would races. assume it would right. be at the higher level. Yeah. Are, is, um, you know, is the voting going to be suppressed because people just say the heck with That's what I'm afraid home. people are going to say. I wasn't, you know, candidates might say, I wasn't able to hold my meet and greet. I wasn't able to get my Probably point of candidates I don't like, want any look of yeah. impropriety as in, you know. I would say let's postpone it. I mean, I, I don't want to do that, but I don't know. Given this, I mean, do we postpone it a month or two weeks? I, you know, that's the question is how long do you postpone it for? Well, can, can we postpone Just it a, like to a specific date, but then or a decision two weeks date? from now if things are going in the well, wrong I'm sure direction. there's going to be some sort of flexibility there. They're not going to say you pick that, you have that. Right. If that's the route you guys want to go, I would suggest a 30 day delay. I think by then we get a better picture of what's actually going on and then move forward from there. The only thing they recommend is that they want all elections and town meeting is done before fiscal 21. Right. So right now we're moving, just using it as an example, any appointments now we've canceled all elective surgeries. Uh, anything that's going right. forward it's going to be a month out so we're looking at May 1st. Right. Uh, is what we will be rescheduling. Uh, patients for and to you know um, reschedule surgeries. I mean, and if you guys opt to not move the schedule, I mean, people think that this early voting is such a phenomenal thing, and it's so similar to the absentee voting that we've had all along. And if somebody's still after you know May, it's like I, I'm not sure it's done. You absentee vote. We do it all by mail. Mm -hmm. It's actually really really easy. Could we move to an all absentee vote, or is that not possible? I think there would be ramifications on how you notify everybody about that. Yeah. Because when you know, not all like not everybody reads the paper. Yeah. Not everybody has the internet. I know. Not everybody sees yeah. the notices. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> so right now we're scheduled. The election is what the fourteenth. Correct. April fourteenth. And this way, if things are an upswing, and we have town meeting at the regular time, yeah. then any new people coming in would be after town meeting. So Jessica and I were looking at the calendar, and we were thinking that if you were to uh, delay by 30 days, May 12th would be the... Yeah, so it would be the 12th, right? Yeah. But we would still have to petition the governor to change that. Which is going to be, obviously, a lot of, we're not the only city or town in this situation. Yeah. And that's where they're telling everybody to act swiftly, and they will decide. You know, even if they don't decide, and we still just choose to do it, even if we get the decision after we hold the election, we can still ratify the vote. 
Okay. You can even push the election back into July and August of uh, yeah. the next yeah, fiscal case. year. That's, that's allowed by... But you said we couldn't. We had to do it. It's the worst case. They suggest that you get it done before FY21. Oh, yeah. Could you do that? Yes. Do we, I don't think we're at the point that we need to. No. Are we just watching the curve of it all? I think by then we'll be... So if we pushed it back longer than 30 days, would that have an effect on the next election cycle as far as a uh, local election? Would we have to push back that? back a year or is it just whenever? No. Okay. And what happens? This is an this exception is really only. This is right. an exception only. What happens to people's term? So whoever holds office right now, yeah. like Molly, yeah. you would not be done April 14th. You would still have your position until the election. Oh, oh she's going to have to cancel the walk right <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a reason for this. <laughs> So there aren't going to be any vacancies caused by not having the election. That's yeah, that's what I didn't know. If it ends and then they have to leave office and then we have a vacant board of seats. And again, I apologize if I can't give you any definitive, you know, 100% because this has really never happened before. Yeah. <clears throat> Up until two days ago, I'm just like, there's no way in heck that we're ever, you know, moving the election day. So yeah. It's an act of legislation and that, you know, takes quite a bit. But because of what's going on, they are speeding everything up and giving us more options. So it's up to you guys. So I yeah. guess the question is, do we want to just move it back 30, or do we want to move it back more and uh, to be safe? Can you move, move it, it twice? I mean, is it, it again a lot of it? There's just little papers in the air, depending where they right. drop. You know, what's going to happen with the school? Are they going to extend the school later? Right. 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 You know, a lot of times it's been frowned upon to have elections. You know, after the school season's over. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it buts and all of that, but ultimately, if we say this is the way it is, then we got to kind of stick to it. So we're never going to please. Every single person. But if we go to June, that's still theoretically like early June, like that would still be the school year, even if it was normal. Right. School I, year think, I think the middle of May is fine. I think if we do it either middle of May, and I'm, again, if some fluke happens, we decide right now we're going to do it May 12th. Mm -hmm. Three days from now, we're like, oh God, this isn't going well. It's going to be June. They're going to let us do it. Yeah. I mean, everything is in such flux right now. So yeah, nobody can. So, yeah. Data's so May 12th. May 12th. Yeah. So we stay. Right. Good. Make, make a motion well. that we uh, delay an annual town. Do we, we have to vote on this. You do too, as well, right? You guys, uh, I think David has all the paperwork for it. There's yeah, the so you have to file the legislation. You have to send a letter to Governor Baker. Well, let's just vote on it first. Do you have a motion that I have to read? Or yeah, just I need to vote on it. Okay, give me a moment to find the right piece of paperwork from the Cape of uh, Oh, is it this one? An act relative to the postponement? No, that's not it. I can make up my own, but it'd probably be a lot shorter. Here we go. How about to execute all documents necessary? All right. No, there's a lot of technical language. I mean, I will obviously get to the right room and notify both newspapers of this so it's in the paper as soon as possible. And have the same time. Oh, I mean, you had people coming into the primary voting for the select board. You're going to have people show up on April 4th. Right. Is it this one? The letter <laughs> delivered by hand? Mm, no. No. Yeah, so just leave it. Get it out as much as possible. All right. And the only thing that have to change, and I think this might have to stay true for the next warrant, is that one of our locations was a sugar shack for posting. They're not closed for. Oh, what is we could have three posting locations scattered throughout Hadley, and unfortunately, the three locations I chose are kind of clustered okay. based on the fact that those are the only ones that are open. Oh, kind of, you know, town hall, <laughs> I'm going to go uh, take a walk around the block. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, yeah. if you if you so, want to, you can so say you move reference in this motion. I think they're still doing the restaurant to be to be entered into the record. The store and takeout. Can you post it in there? Is there a certain space within their business that it needs to be? I, I don't know where Bill always posts it, but I can ask that. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe since the store is still open, I apologize. Yeah. The store can still do that. Then absolutely. Okay. Perfect. I take it. I'll have that. Back. Thank you. Still do the store and take out. You just can't sit down. Of course, my husband yes. was appalled. They took all the chairs and tables away at Atkins today. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh, There's oh, no I more forgot. gathering of the old men. Yeah. Oh, gee. We're on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to make the following motion, and I apologize for the length of it. Uh, moved 
that whereas the rapidly evolving public health issues associated with the coronavirus COVID-19, including the swift spread of the disease, present lack of containment, and the risk to the most vulnerable populations inherent in public gatherings, whereas various public and private entities, including professional sports leagues, universities, school districts, cultural institutions, and events, and more have been canceled, closed, or temporarily suspended, whereas the World Health Organization has identified the current crisis as a pan pandemic, and whereas the governor has declared a state of emergency in the Commonwealth. The town is taking action consistent with recommendations from federal and state agencies and officials to limit the spread of this disease amongst the residents and voters of the town its officials and employees and visitors, including closing or limiting the use of schools and public buildings, suspending in-person meetings and other gatherings in town office buildings, and encouraging residents to communicate with town staff by email and telephone to the extent possible. For all these reasons, the Board of Selectmen votes, uh, or the Select Board, votes to immediately request the governor to file emergency legislation on behalf of the town so-called governor's bill seeking authorization to delay and reschedule the annual town election to a date to be determined by the selectmen which uh, will end on May 12th 2020 in consultation with the town clerk board of health and other public safety personnel and authorizing early voting by mail in connection with such postponed election provided further that all nominations ballot preparation, absentee voting, and the like be ratified, validated, and confirmed as though it was undertaken consistent with the date of the postponed election. And further, if such legislation is not passed prior to the date of the scheduled annual town election to ratify, validate, and confirm the board's vote to postpone the 2020 annual town election, finally, the board calls upon its legislative delegation to support the filing of the special legislation and also wishes to provide direction to such delegation that it supports the filing of generally applicable legislation allowing for the postponement of municipal elections this fiscal year. The end. Second. <laughs> the end. Second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, I think we have an election warrant for you to sign tonight. Okay. Right there. No, no, oh, right no, there. that has the April date on it, though. Is, didn't that what isn't that what it just said? No, we're going to the state we want now. All right. Can we just? And if you can, are we going to go down and print it? No, I think we can take a vote. We to, have plenty of time. We only yeah. have to post it at ten days. I mean, now I think it's going to be a ten days prior. So we have plenty of time. All right. So if you want to take a vote to sign it uh, at your convenience with the, the change date, we can do that. Where are you going to keep it? Put it on David's office. desk with the note for y'all to sign it, like we do for mm -hmm. other things. Okay. We'll be ready towards the end of the week. Technically, yeah, we're ready tomorrow. But I just want to check. I'd rather wait a few days. I mean, we have plenty of time yeah. to sign the warrant. All right. I don't want to sign something and then have to. Well, here's, here's, here's the question: Is what are we doing for Wednesday? Are we we're meeting as a select board? I think we should, as long as we have the remote policy, I'd prefer that we do like a remote meeting. Uh -huh. And if we can do that, I'm into meeting. Okay. The do, do a remote, do you want to do a remote meeting by choice? Meaning that, again, if people want to come and visit the I mean, the, the president said no gatherings larger than 10 people. So, I mean, we can easily be 10 people well, in a select board meeting. But it would be remote for the uh, public that wanted to come for and make comments. So it would be a teleconferencing or phone call conferencing. Could yeah, there are two, two items on the agenda that require public, public hearing. Public hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we're going to get anybody, but uh, we still have to provide an open town hall for that. And if you move the location, a larger room. So that people can distance. You can move yeah. as long as you post it where the new location is. I'm sure that would be reasonable. We set up a Zoom meeting and it's posted with that with the call in numbers. Yeah. To join the Zoom meeting. I think we just do Zoom that. Meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. it's, it's, it's all the rage. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, all right. So we can have the uh, the ballot uh, warrant on the uh, Wednesday agenda. If you'd like it that soon. All right. 
So just so we would all be calling into the Zoom line, and then if somebody during the public hearing wanted to comment, they would have the Zoom information to call in and comment. Or can they like chat a question? I thought we were going to have a, the board in person if we wanted to, and then have people that wanted to comment or be at the meeting. So to be very honest with everybody, and I, I am still learning Zoom. I have the ability to mute, and it also has the ability to chat, mm -hmm. where you can run it up the side and have a chat. Mm -hmm. right. um, I envisioned it being a closed meeting, as in no public here. Right. The select board, but social distancing, here. and I was going to think it, I was thinking of adding another table here mm -hmm. to spread y'all out more, and then bare necessities in the room, and then everybody else could call in. Um, and make their comments, and then we would ask them to hang up after they make their comment. Y'all can respond, or we can take note, depending on what the public hearing requires, and that way it can keep flowing through. There's 10 different numbers that people can call into, mm -hmm. so it can move through fairly quickly. Um, and I've done a couple of practice meetings today. I'm going to knock out a few more tomorrow and make sure that I'm ready to, to, to go and to, to run the meeting. For, for you on the Zoom portion. It's fine. Okay. And I guess we'll just have to leave the option open that we might have to do it all Zoom, all a Zoom meeting. There is that potential that we'd have to do it all remotely. Everybody can call in. I mean, yeah. you, you don't have to be here. That was just what I was thinking about mm -hmm. the numbers. Yeah, yeah. I was coming up with seven okay. was what I was coming up with. But otherwise, it's close to the public. I, I think so. If town yeah. hall's closed, town hall's closed. closed. Yeah. And again, I think you know everybody needs to make a, a personal choice. If somebody would prefer to be home and call in, who's done, they should do that, right? I mean, no, nothing against that person for staying home. No. Yeah. yeah. Not at all. Yeah. I don't. Because again, everybody has their own. Whatever I'm supposed to do. Except for Joyce, that's going to need tech support I sitting know. next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to be home. That's with what me. the emergency. <laughs> that's for. not my husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to come with it, but. Do you care if, about department heads? Because I think there's an agenda on there that I need to be here for. You can call in as well. Whatever you want to do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just have to count before. We you might mute you, you know, while you're talking. We might mute you while you're That's talking. So I'm definitely. <laughs> right, <man. laughs> we do have that option. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Uh, delegate hiring authority to the chair for non-department hiring positions, head positions. What were you thinking there, David? So if we need, uh, if, if we're short-staffed and we need to hire people quickly in order to perform functions, not at the department head meeting, not, not at the department head level, or and not at the managerial level, but mm -hmm. Let's say we needed to get laborers in, uh, and we're down on our bench strength. Um, just authorizing you to, to make those high kind of hires so that we can be as nimble as possible. Okay. I have no, no oh, argument. Streamline. Yeah. Does it have to be the chair of the select board, or could the town administrator do that? Or we'd say both yeah. of you. And, I mean, there should be some why, sort of. Why not the HR guy? Hmm? Why not the HR guy with you? Yeah, that's fine. fine. You're here. You see what we need. You, you, you'll be the first one they come to to say, hey. Yeah. So what are we talking about anyways? Are we yeah. talking about? Uh, yeah. it sounds like temporary. Yeah, yeah. but for what we for what, for what temporary officers. But yeah, I mean, there's a certain there's certain things where if it's an officer or something like that, the select board is the only appointing authority. So if you're going to assign someone to do the hiring it has to be a select board member if it's a police officer yeah, so right, mm -hmm. right. it's a little bit different for it's probably different for civilian positions but um and i know it's different for fire because mike actually within the law has the appointing authority so i mean it would probably make sense if it would be someone from the select board or the yeah. board itself if you're so maybe it's just that. in situations where a select board is required to be the hiring authority then it's temporarily delegated yeah, one of the things that we've talked about for years with being a small town, this is true for many small towns, is that our bench strength is not good. Mm -hmm. And if we are in a situation where we have a number of people 
who are out or taking care of uh, taking care of themselves or family members, mm -hmm. and we're beginning to not function. Um, can we get a, bring in temporary workers or right. even permanent workers on, uh, on a, uh, as soon as possible? So if we could identify uh, somebody who would have that authority to make that hire. I think, yeah. I think it'd be fine to have you do the, the civilian non-appointed positions since you're here every day anyways, mm -hmm. um, and you would know what's needed. Mm -hmm. And then, but I, I think, Christian in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I, I think that, you know, to the extent possible, I mean, I kind of doubt that, you know, on a Friday night, you're gonna say, I gotta hire 17 officers, and look, I just so happened to find 17 officers to hire. <laughs> so, the backgrounds are done. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> so, I, I think we should, do things as normally as possible yeah. to the extent possible. So mm -hmm. let's not just throw out all the checks and balance and just say hire away. You, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's not my intention. Right. Yeah. So yeah. to the extent possible, we should still bring it to the board. And Absolutely. but if not possible, then absolutely. you might have a situation where one person comes down with the virus and it quarantines everybody else in that department. That's right. right. So that's your example. Right. Yeah. Right. I also, I also am not certain that anyone other than the select board has for my old hiring authority. Things. Right, I, I'm fairly certain the select board is the, the governing authority when it comes to appointment. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know if, if that's true or not. If, if any, just anyone can hire a civilian. No, you're the, the, you're the, the hiring and firing the authority. Yeah. The select board. Oh, HR says in. select board is the only hiring authority. There you go. So, so does it have to be a quorum that makes that decision or just a, a person? Hi, Ed. You're in the meeting on speakerphone mm -hmm. and David Phil just asked a question. Uh, Ed, uh, yeah, I just want to confirm. does it have to be a quorum of the select board? Does it have to be three people voting on it or just one person answering or one person making the appointment? Yeah, so Sam, 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 Sam. Say it louder, please. Ed, are you there? You got to turn your radio on. Radio down. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, yeah. Ed? Ed, you're breaking up really badly. How about, how about, how about we table this item for now? Okay. Yeah. We're going to meet on Wednesday. We have the Zoom potential. Like, if we do need to call an emergency meeting and for some reason we are quarantined, maybe in quarantine you'll be able to have access to your computer and be able to so. do this. But uh, I'd say we just table it for right now. Oh, We're going to meet on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Get some clarification there. I think all you really need to find out is whether or not the select board can appoint one person to do it. Because by what he said, you are the only people that can hire anyone in this town, regardless of civilian. Right. right. He's pulling up the bylaw and he'll text it to me in a moment. Okay, no problem. Uh, all right, other COVID-19 preparations, including adoption of the new personnel policies. Um, what do we feel about who has reviewed these policies? Do you, you and Ed have reviewed yeah. them? Yeah. So do we do we have to do these tonight, or could we have a chance to like really read them and then do it Wednesday? Yeah, you, you can do it on Wednesday. I just feel I, more comfortable. Like, I originally yeah. set them up for Wednesday. It just wasn't quite clear whether we were meeting on Wednesday. So if we're not going to meet on okay. Wednesday, I want to have as many tools in place. But if, we're, if we can wait two days, it's I'm good with that. Fraternization. Wow, that's a big word. So if we're not doing that, can I bring up another point? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with the restaurants and bars being closed in town, is there anything that we can do from a licensing perspective or something along those lines to kind of ease the pressure on the businesses that maybe is there anything that prevents a restaurant from offering to go food that currently doesn't? Is there anything that the town can do to kind of help these businesses that are basically closed down as far as staying open to a, a better extent? Is there anything that the Board of Health could do, that inspections could do, something along those lines? I'm sure there is, but I'm coming. I'm not coming up with anything concrete that would be meaningful. So um, I am going to. I I am going to reach out to Lynn Gray of the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce and ask her, well, what do they need? What kind of help might a government offer them? Uh, you know, the, the, 
we're so tied in many different ways that we can't give public dollars out to private aid right. entities. But and, and I'm not saying dollars, but I'm saying if there's regulation we could ease for, uh, I don't know in what areas, but yes. anything that we could do to make life better since people are basically out of yes. business for three weeks. Or even working with them on some short-term cash flow in right. terms of, you know, deferring some payments and yeah. that would have to be done, obviously. <coughs> Town cash flow comes first, but on the other hand, right. if something was spread over three months yeah. instead of once in a quarter. Well, that's something we can talk about during our situational meeting tomorrow and mm -hmm. see if there's uh, models that we can like, we can get from other towns. I, I actually have a meeting with Lynn. Set yeah. up. I have a meeting with Lynn tomorrow about uh, another potential marijuana establishment in the mall. So if you want to join, I'll let you know when she gets back to me about another time. one in the mall. Right. The one. Oh, the one. Yeah. Yeah. The one. The one that we already know about. Yeah. yeah. So it would, be, it would behoove our restaurants to put out a takeout menu and also people can still go in and grab it and go and bring it home too. So I noticed, uh, I think Staples now, they're d delivering all your orders. So if you want to order mm -hmm. anything there, you can order it online and they'll deliver it to you. I think, I know uh, liquor, uh, like four season, four, four seasons, seasons, you can order online and then pick up. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a bunch of places I've been getting emails about mm -hmm. that are starting to provide these services. Yeah. So, Can we uh, put a link on the website that's, that connects up to all these uh, online liquor delivery stores. services for goods and liquor and food? I, I absolutely. I'm building the town's COVID-19 page tonight. Yeah. And tomorrow morning I can make a shop local, get it delivered, kind of something like that. I can I can completely yeah, add so that. we're we're not endorsing any one business, but we are linking up to the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce. You want to just go through the AACC? Well, I was just going to say you might want to check and see what, because I've been getting a lot of notifications from the chamber, so you may want to check and see what they already have. Okay. Yeah. Could be just better linking there. I'll, yeah. I'll check in with John Page and Claudia. Yeah. They, okay. Can I ask one question? Is it okay if I email you the sit situational report? Are you all okay with that? With that getting posted? Um, yeah, I just had a real quick question. It looks like it needs to be approved. Is this something? Who approves these things? You, as the PIO, you uh, make the recommendation, and then um, I would sign off on it. All right, there we are. We <laughs> All right, any other items anybody has right now? Any unforeseen well, items that we need to discuss? Oh, we can, uh, Tonight, stay tuned for the next, Good. Okay. next one. Yeah. Wait, the only question I have is, did we close the library? I mean, the Senior Center I know is closed. The library is closed. closed. Library's closed. Yep. Okay. So, any other closed. offices, buildings, anything else? Churches are closed. closed. Yeah. I think that the last time the library was on limited hours are they they're, I'm they're, pretty sure it's they're, closed they're closed but you can order your books and they just ordered a whole bunch of brown paper bags oh. and you can go yeah. and pick them up or they're okay. delivering them I'm unsure of that yeah. but if you look they on will. the town okay. COVID-19 page there's a link to library explaining what their plan is yeah. and okay what doing. okay mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't realize they're so close to the public minutes. going into the library yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. DPW is the same they're they're up and operating but uh, with people dropping by not so much and just so you guys know, since I'm one of the offices downstairs, I have absolutely no concerns with my being working from my office. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't close to the public. I mean, if it's close to the public and it's just me in there, I'm inhaling my own germs. <laughs> you know? So a good portion of what I do is, you know, kind of walk in, but a huge percentage I can only do from my office. Do you have so any masks in your in office in case someone does come in? Do you have a mask? I Nobody's coming in. Don't yeah, it's yeah, closed. It's, it's closed to the public. Okay, so you're okay. And, and you're able to receive things that people need. I actually went out and did a house call marriage intention today because okay. we were closed to the public. That's so, cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of stuff that, I mean, if they, even if the town hall is closed, they call me and say, yes, I need this birth record. Great, pull up, here you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Type of thing. I mean, I do drive by swearing in. So I do the 12 o'clock on Saturday night, oh my God, we're leaving for Aruba tomorrow, I need the birth record. So that's one of the advantages of being from the small town. But yeah. again, as one of the department heads downstairs, I have absolutely no concern about coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, I'm saying that. 
All right. Thank you. Uh, motion so, to adjourn, or do we have, need anything else? So we should announce uh, the passing of Tim Brennan, who's a oh, yeah. resident, and long, long time head of Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Yes. Yeah. Well, Joyce, you can do it again. On <laughs> <laughs> can do it again. <laughs> That's a point. Tim was a great guy. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, very well known to our boards in town. Mm -hmm. And throughout the valley. Yeah. All right, anything else? Motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Third. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for taking Thank the you. time out of your schedule on short notice. Thank you for coming.